Can I open my eyes yet? Yes. You can help me find my earrings. I have in my day. Oh, lights, camera, action. Ah, yes, I'm bringing the camera. Hey. Dad, don't you like it? Say something. I think he's too stunned to speak. I can't, I can't believe, is this the same two girls who used to run around in jeans and t-shirts? <laughs> I think he approves. Do <laughs> you, Dad? I, I, I can't remember anything with that, that little old long-legged tomboy. I mean, and you're really sure, aren't you? Positive. With all my heart. Well, I'm glad, because between you and me, it scares me to death to give my little girl away today. Charles, the camera. Pardon me? The camera. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, the camera. Okay, every, everybody, all you beautiful ladies, please get into the shot. That includes you, beautiful lady. Would oh, you please? Oh, very get well. But I just think it's all sentimental foolish. Sure, well, you may, but you reminded me about the camera, <laughs> didn't you? I'm panning up. Beautiful dress. I think every reporter and photographer in this town is out on the terrace firing right. questions away at your mother. I don't suppose it would do any good to suggest that you sit down, try to relax. Nope. But I appreciate you coming back here. I really do. Not at all. How could I refuse my escort when he says he needs my moral support? Do you mind, Dorian, if I ask you a few questions about Tina? Not at all. I can't promise. Of course, I'll know all the answers. Well, but then it, it seems oh. to me I... Oh, excuse me. Excuse Not me. At all. What happened? Did you guys get trapped by the reporters? No, thank goodness. Where are they? Out on the terrace asking Elizabeth questions. Oh, I'd like to see them get something out of her. Katie, so would I. I think I, I'll I'm, check on I'm so sorry. I, I, well, I don't know what you're going through, but I, I can really empathize with you, and I will help you every way I can. Believe me. Thanks, Dad. Right now, I need Mom's help, though. I need some answers to legal questions. I have to find out if I'm married to Cord or if he is still married to Tina. Do you know, Judith? No, I have to make some calls. I have to find out. I have to know where I stand. I have to figure this out. I have to prepare myself for any possibility. Well, don't you want to wait until you've had a chance to talk to Cord? Cord is at Lanfair with Tina. I don't know when he'll be back, but when I do see him, I want this worked out. Oh, God, what if... What if he is legally married to Tina? Just because Tina returned from the dead doesn't mean you and Cord are going to stop loving each other. Yeah, but what does that mean legally, Dad? Am I going to be left with a meaningless marriage certificate? Let's not speculate. I'm going to make some calls. I'm going to come with you, Mom. No, you, you just let your mother take care of it. You stay down here with me. Stay calm and hold on to your hopes. I am trying. I'll be down as soon as I find out something. Mom, wait. I need to talk to you. Well, Elizabeth seems to be doing marvelously. Oh, good. Dorian... I've been thinking about this, and the more I do, the more I am convinced the whole thing is a definite, deliberate ploy of Tina's. I don't think so. It's too set, it's too calculated, too dramatic. If it were calculated, why would Tina have waited to show up until after Kate and Cord had said their wedding vow? I don't know, bad timing, but even if it isn't a ploy, one way or the other, I am not going to allow Tina to ruin my daughter's happiness. Now, you tell me, where is she vulnerable? Can she be bought? Can she be bribed? Money has always been very important in Tina's life. Good, then I will give her a blank check. But I don't think it's money she's after this time. She wants court. Excuse me, Charles. Yes. Elizabeth is holding the reporters at bay, but I think she could use some reinforcement. Okay, okay, I'll be right there. Would you come out and help me with the reporters? I'd be happy to. Fine, come on. No, not for me, thanks. Dorian? No, thank you. What is taking Mom so long? Let me take it easy. She's probably just having trouble reaching people. It's late. Uh Excuse me. I'm going to be leaving. I wonder if you wouldn't say goodbye to everybody for me. Do you have a dinner date? Uh, no, I do not, but I feel just a bit in the way. Oh, nonsense. It's always a pleasure having your company. Thank you, but everything seems to be under control. There's really nothing for me to do here. Well, you could give Charles some much-needed support. Uh, Charles? Charles? He's doing better than anybody else. The man's a tower of strength. Yeah. That's all for Kate's benefit, but I know my son. He needs someone to help him through this crisis, too. I'll call him later. Thank you. Kate, won't you have something to eat? You haven't had a bite all day. Mom, did you find anything out? I talked to some of my colleagues who specialize in these matters. I have an answer. 
Mary Lynn, the restaurant is completely booked. It's going to be at least a half an hour before we can get a table for lunch. Oh, well, I'm not in any hurry, are you? Oh, I wish I were. Unfortunately, I don't. Oh. oh, I never finished telling you about the trick I pulled on John. Cassie, you're taking a big chance. You could just make him angry at you. He doesn't have to know, Mary Lynn. All I want is my old job back. Then maybe finally he and I can start to work things out. You're in love with John, aren't you? I think I am. But who can be sure until we finally have a shot at a real relationship? I'm over my guilt. Mom's finally dealing with what happened. What's John's problem? Why does he keep avoiding me? He's just avoiding dealing with this whole issue. Cassie, are you sure he cares for you? Yes, I'm pretty sure. I know. <laughs> that wasn't very convincing, was it? No. <laughs> Well, he must care about me because he's having such a hard time dealing with me, right? Well, is love ever simple? Not in my limited experience, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. So did you go to that party last night? Yes, speaking of guys. Really? Aren't you Hi, Marcy. Is Mr. Hawkins called? No messages, huh? Hey, what's going on here? That's what I would like to know. Hello, Cassie. Oh, at least you remembered my name. Hey, if you're in the mood for a fight, forget it. I've got an important meeting, an assistant. I'm trying to break in if I can just find her. Marcy! John, I really could care less about your meeting or your assistant, but I do care about my pride, and I'm not going to take this lying down. What has got you so hot and bothered this morning? A messenger just delivered my severance pay, and I don't call this a settlement. I call it an insult. After everything we've been through together, this is all I'm worth to you? I know that, but I have to do something to help Katie put her world back together. Finding Tina at least would be a start. You're not still thinking of trying to buy Tina off. I told you yesterday, I really don't think that her motivation is greed. Do you really believe she loves Cord? Yes, incredible oh. as it may seem. Nobody, I was with her the day that she found out that she was pregnant. She displayed certain symptoms. I made a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. I have never seen a woman so overcome with joy. Of course, she was carrying the Buchanan air. No, she was carrying Cord's baby. Excuse me. Yes. Carl Sanders. Oh, yes, Donald. I've been waiting to hear from you. State Department. Mm -hmm. Any report on Tina Roberts? Are you sure? What is it? Is there something wrong? Did they find her? $22. You're lucky I don't make you eat every little shred of this check. $22? Oh, don't look surprised. I saw your signature on the bottom of the check. I know an insult when I see one. Take it easy. It's probably just a mistake. A mistake? The only mistake I ever made was working for a louse like you. Oh, I knew you were macho and pig-headed, but I never knew you were cheap. It's probably a bookkeeping error. And when Marcy comes back, she'll cut you another check. Hi, John. Did you enjoy your lunch? Uh, yes. Hi, Marcy. Uh, I got a few questions for you. Oh, I'll just put these files away. I have been sorting through a stack this high down in the incinerator. These are the only files that survived the review. Uh, listen, forget the files for just a minute. How was a check cut to Cassie for a fraction of the right amount? I wouldn't know. Well, if you wouldn't know, who would? Well, it's obvious you've got your hands filled with problems, so I'll just make myself... Mom. No, it's no problem, Cassie. I'm sure that Marcy can explain a simple little bookkeeping error, right, Marcy? Oh, well, John, I don't make bookkeeping errors. I put everything on the computer. Now, if there's a problem, it's, it's software, not me. It's a software computer? What are you talking what about? What didn't I tell you? Well, I thought this office needed to move into the 20th century, so I leased some new equipment. I, I didn't approve that. I am sure. As soon as you see how efficient it makes everything, you'll be glad I took the initiative. Initiative, that's something you've always admired, John. All right. Let's just forget bookkeeping for the time being. How about Mr. Hawkins' phone call? Hawkins? Hawkins. Yeah, 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 Hawkins. He was supposed to call me when he's ready for me to go into action. Oh, him. I told him you were unavailable. You did what? Well, I figured your lunch would run over. And once you came back, you'd want to reorganize the office. Mm. Oh, we have got so many details to iron out. No, Marcy, you iron them out. i got to get a hold of Hawkins. Another problem, John? No, no problem. I'm just looking for my phone numbers. That beat up old thing? I threw it out. Come again. So I put everything on the computer and throw the old stuff away with the files. Let me get this straight, Marcy. I don't have any files anymore. 
And I don't have any phone numbers either. They're all stored on the hard disk. You can call them up in seconds. How can I call them up in seconds when I don't even know how to turn that damn machine on? Don't lose your temper. I'm not losing my temper. I'm not losing my temper. <sighs> okay? I just want my files back and my phone numbers and my old disorganized office. Is that understood? Guys, what's the matter? There's a great game going on over there. Why don't you two go join in? I told you, Kev, she won't talk about it either. Talk about what? Aunt Tina. See, Joe, we're supposed to play entrepreneur with her. We don't know where she is. Oh, Kevin, your Aunt Tina had to go out of town suddenly. Someone said that she ran away. Is that true, Marilyn? Honey, your mom and dad don't want you to worry about your Aunt Tina. I'm sure she'll be coming home again very soon. And when she gets home, you'll have lots of time to play games with her. You could tell us. She's in trouble, isn't she? Kevin, sometimes grown-ups have to go away for a while to work out their problems. But they usually find out that going away doesn't help. And then they return to the ones who love them. And that's when... Hello. Can I help you? My name's Mary Linda. You're a friend of Cassie's, right? I remember her waving to you at the Vernon Inn this morning. Yes, yes, that's right. <laughs> My name's Lee Halpern. Uh, I was walking by the park and I saw you and I thought I'd come up and introduce myself. I'm glad you did. Now, if you two major leaguers will go join the game. Are you sure Aunt Tina's gonna be all right? I cross my heart. Now go hit a home run for me. Better yet, hit two. Okay, okay. come on, Joy. Bye. Well, you certainly handled them well. Well, I've had a lot of practice. Well, for someone so young, you certainly know a lot about children. Well, that's more than I can say. So, uh, do you babysit full time? No, I'm, I'm in college. Oh, now, you see, that is another thing you have on me. I'm, I guess, what you call a self-made woman. Well, my father started out selling newspapers. And then he worked his way up to uh, editor-in-chief of the newspaper in El Paso. Now he's news director at WVLE. Oh, what a remarkable man. Did you work a lot of jobs before you were able to form your own company? Well, uh, I, I paid my dues. <laughs> Did you just wake up one day and say, I want to be my own boss? No, no, no. But I guess it was. I'm always sort of in the back of my mind, you know. So how do you like Landview? So far? Well, so far, I find it, um, fascinating. Uh, <laughs> you mean it's very quiet compared to New York? <laughs> well, it's a little slower, but I find the people here seem to care about each other a lot. You know, I bet you have a lot of friends, huh? Well, I had a lot of friends in El Paso. But here, uh, I have to learn to trust people, and that's been very hard for me. Do you know I am exactly the same way? Really? Yes, yes, I am. Now I know that I sort of popped in here and struck up a conversation with you, but that's unusual for me. Maybe it's because I sense that you and I could talk to each other. Do you want to hear something odd? Huh. From the moment you sat down, I sensed the very same thing. It's only software. Once you get the hang of it, you'll get down on your knees and thank me. Where are you going now? Well, that's another thing. You have got to learn to delegate authority. Now, I've got something to take care of, and I'll be right back. Hey, hold on a minute here. Hey, who's the boss around here? Now, wait just a... Marcy! What are you grinning for? I'm happy for you, that's all. You finally got what you wanted. Professionalism minus... The emotional commitment, emotional attachment. She's just used to the corporate setup, that's all. Once I loosen her up a little bit, get her to do things my way, then she'll get the office back in shape and back on track, and I'll get my life in order. I'm sure you're going to get everything you so richly deserve. Now, may I please have my severance pay in cash? All right, all right, all right. Will that do her? You want it in singles, too. No, this is fine. Thanks. Here we go. Time to do your homework. What is that? The latest in accounting software. 
By the time I'm finished with you, you and your operation will be one highly efficient integrated system. Won't that be wonderful? Well, thanks for trying. Right. Oh, don't tell me the State Department struck out. My friend Donald cross-checked every United States passport leaving this country in the last 24 hours, and Tina Roberts is not among them. That proves it. This is not one of her ploys. She really doesn't want to be found. Which means that Kate and Cord are going to be living in a sort of limbo until she is. I know you want to help them very badly, but there is nothing that you can do. It couldn't have come at a worse time. Not only this on my mind, but I have a visitor coming. A very important, very demanding visitor. I know I can't ask the details, but oh, I would love to hear them. Well, it's, it's not a top secret. The Crown Prince of Mendora is arriving here shortly for a state visit. Since I am still the official ambassador to his country, I am expected to escort him wherever he goes. Sounds like a great honor. Well, it's also a chore. How am I going to split up my time between trying to help Kate and Cord and play protocol games with a crown prince? That does sound hard, doesn't it? But I, I am well known for coming up with simple solutions to complicated questions. Dorian, if you can come up with a simple solution to this one, I will be in your debt forever. Careful, I may hold you to that. My solution is this. You go ahead, try and find Tina. Leave the crown prince to me. Let me escort the crown prince. Really, I want very much to do something for you and your family, and oh. this way I can take a burden off of your shoulders. I really am quite expert at whining and dining VIPs. Though I never have taken on a crown prince, I think I'm up to the challenge. Oh, I'm sure you are. I'm sure you would be able to charm the crown right off the crown prince. But Dorian, <laughs> I, I don't think so. You don't know how, how guarded and suspicious the royal family can be to outsiders. It's taken me years to earn their trust, particularly back of the prince. I promise you, I will not interfere in any way with the affairs of state the two of you need to discuss. But when it comes to ribbon cutting and champagne receptions, really, I think I'd be a very good substitute. Would you be honest with me for a second? This oh. isn't just to give me time to help Kate and Cord, is it? What other reasons would I have? Come on. All right, I do have my own reasons. Mm. The last few weeks I've had a hard time forgetting about Cassie and John. Even the prison reform board has not managed to distract me. And you think a crown prince might just do the trick for you? Let's put it this way. You'd be doing me a favor, I'd be doing you a favor, and what could be more fair than that? I just am fresh out of arguments. Oh, I can't thank you enough. Oh, don't thank me yet. You're gonna have your hands full. Believe me, Charles, you won't be sorry. Mr. Hawkins, I, I, I apologize for the misunderstanding. It, I know, we had the perfect plan set up to trap your vice president with his hands in the company till, and I know it'll work. What do you mean, forget it? Mr. Hawkins, I'm sure we can work this out if you'll just give me another ch oh. Short fuse, huh? He's not the only one. Oh, once we get this office in line, you'll have to fight off the clients. Now come over here and let me show you how I've set up our system. So now it's our system. Now, say you want to call up a client's account. All you've got to do is push this button. I don't push buttons. You've done everything you can. I mean... Kate knows your concern. She knows you're there for her. Dorian, as always, your timing is rotten. Well, I'm sorry, Herb, but this can't wait. I simply have to see Judith. Ah, I thought I'd find you here. And I was right. <laughs> I want to say how very sorry I feel about Cord and Kate. Is that where you stopped by? No, no, I want to ask Judith a favor. Judith, the Crown Prince of Mendora is coming here tomorrow. What? That's very strange. He always refused to travel. Well, he's on his way now. So what, what, you want an interview with him, what? No, well, no, no uh, well, perhaps, but actually, I, uh, Charles has asked me to escort the Prince around town while he's here. That's surprising. Not really. Charles and I have become very close. It's not unusual for him to ask a favor from me if he needs one. Anyway, I was wondering if you could tell me anything about the prince that might help me put him at his ease. You know, I'd really be very grateful. Uh, I don't know what I could tell you, Dorian. You do know the man, don't you? Yes, but I haven't seen him in years. He can't have changed that much. 
Can he? Or maybe would it, what sort of things does he like to do? Is he social, gregarious? Uh, mm. Oh, please don't tell me he's an old stuffed shirt. Well, no. I remember him as very sort of young and shy and awkward. Actually, kind of a recluse. How young? I don't know, 24, 25. Oh, that young? Maybe 26, I'm not sure. Oh, I see. So much for a sophisticated encounter with dashing European royalty. Sounds to me like you'd be more of a den mother. Herb, that is not amusing. You know, I remember that he was always interested in, in the sciences, chemistry, physics, math. He was always working on a math problem. Oh, dear, we won't have anything to talk about. Well, he does like girls, doesn't he? Well, he was not very social that I remember. Oh. Oh, dear. Maybe he's changed. Oh, I hope he's changed. There's one thing I learned in the Army. Never volunteer for anything. Now you know why. You're such a help, darling. Thank you. What? You know, Dorian, it was very gracious of you to offer to help Charles after all the trouble he's been through this year. Uh, he's really been neglecting his ambassadorial duties, and the last thing he needs is to cope with some awkward, shy young man. <laughs> buy him some music videos. Isn't that what all the kids are into these days? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I'll come up with something, nah. I guess. I'm sorry that I don't have a better report for you. <laughs> so am I. But thank you anyway. Bye. You and me and Charles and Dorian. If there is a Charles and Dorian. Would it upset you if, if Dorian and Charles developed a relationship like ours? No, no, I think everyone should have one just like that. <laughs> You're such a special woman. Thank you. You're a special man. You know, it's, it's, it's natural to feel a little possessive of Charles. Mm. Herb, do you want me to be jealous of Dorian? Well, no, of course not. Good, because possessiveness seems to be her specialty. It's not mine. So does that answer your question? Yes. So, do you want to tell me what you're concerned about? I have a feeling Dorian is after bigger game. Bigger game as in power? Well, she's always been intrigued by power. You saw the effect that titled prince had on her. Oh, yes, until she found out how old he was. I think she's going to have to look somewhere else. I don't think he's going to be much of a match for her. I think she has her sights set on an American with power and a title, like ambassador. Well, I think the situation with John and Cassie was very devastating for her, and she just wants to know that she's still appealing to a man. I think it's more than that. I hope so for Dorian's sake. Why? Having been married to Charles, I know that it's going to be a very stormy ride.